Hey guys, welcome to the Wednesday Night Tips and Tricks Facebook Live with us here at Alaska Dog Works. I'm Michelle Forto and I'm the lead trainer for Alaska Dog Works. And you know, we talk a lot about something we call understanding drive behaviors. A few of you may have seen our ebook that is sent to you in an email when you first get to our website. That's called a landing page and you'll sign up for our emails. You'll actually subscribe for those. And one of the very first ones that you get has that ebook in it. And a few of you have asked me, what exactly does it mean to switch between the drives? And so tonight our tip and trick is going to be a little bit about the drives themselves and how to switch between them. The more you get to know your dog's personality, the better and easier it's going to be to build your training relationship with your dog. So, but before I go any further, hit that like button for me. You know what that does. And remember, if you'd like to get the notification of these events, you just have to go onto the Facebook and click on the events and tell me that you're either interested or you're going to be coming to the event and then you'll get a notification when I'm doing those. Every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. we do this tips and tricks here on Facebook Live. Every Sunday at 7 p.m. we do a different type of Facebook Live program that we're kind of tossing around a different title for. We've been calling it the informational and I think that's kind of dorky. So I'm working on a new title for that one. Also, I want to say thank you again to everybody. I mentioned this on Sunday night's show. Thank you again for going on over to First Paw Media and becoming a subscriber on our YouTube channel. Again, that's called First Paw Media and we have it over on YouTube and we jumped from 200 subscribers to 1,000 subscribers and I really do appreciate that. We will be doing a show on the uh, YouTube channel probably on a different day of the week other than Wednesdays and Sundays and we haven't really decided yet. So stay tuned for more information regarding First Paw Media and the YouTube channel. So as you guys can see, I'm outside today. It has been a beautiful day here in Alaska and because we don't get to enjoy the sun and nice temperatures very long here in Alaska, I thought we'd come on outside and do our class. But it's windy and we've been dealing with a little bit of rain clouds off and on today, but it's still a gorgeous day. So bear with me. I'm not trying to scream at you guys. I'm just trying to make sure that you can hear me thoroughly. Okay, so let's go through what those drives are, okay? You have pack drive, prey drive, defense fight, defense flight, and sex drive. So if your dog is still intact, meaning that they have not been spayed or neutered, then sex drive can become a big problem for female dogs twice a year can become a problem for male dogs twice a year, but it can also become a problem for male dogs throughout the year because females can actually go into heat at different times. It's not always in that February, March, and August, September time frame. Some dogs go into heat in the middle of June. You guys know I've got 39 sled dogs down there, and right now I've got three females in the middle of June in heat wreaking havoc on my males. So if your dog is intact, you guys need to know first off that sex drive is the leading drive. It doesn't matter what the other drives are, okay? So we're going to act like all of our dogs are spayed and neutered so that we can discuss the other drives, okay? So we have pack drive. That is the drive that demonstrates that your dog likes to be around you, wants to hang out with you more than anything else. <coughs> Excuse me. Prey drive is where your dog likes to chase things, whether it's balls or uh, squirrels or people on bikes and skateboards and little kids and stuff. That's prey drive. Defense flight is where your dog is shy and scares away from things. 
defense fight is where your dog can charge at things when it's nervous or scared. So those defensive drives though are kind of linked together and they work off of each other. If you've got a fearful dog, chances are that defense drive is a little bit higher than your pack or prey drive. Which brings me to the whole tip for tonight. How do I switch between those drives, right? So switching between those drives is fairly easy if you have a pack driven dog, there's not a lot you need to do. You don't want your dog to be defensive if he's on pack. Pack driven dogs are the most trainable dogs. But let's say that your dog is highly distracted by anything that moves like the leaves right now or the wind blowing or anything like that. To get your dog back into pack, we're actually gonna use defense to do that. And by using defense, that means that we are going to move through that drive to get the dog back into pack. If you use prey, a treat or a toy, your dog might actually lose all sense of control and an inability to work with you because he's so driven by that object of attraction. So we want to use commands that are very matter of fact when we're working with a dog that has high prey drive by using those defense drives. So make sure that you are very affirmative in your ways that you command your dog to keep them in that pack drive. You want to say sit firmly, down, stay, come, look, all of those things. In fact, a high prey driven dog works best with a very good look command. But the reason for tonight's show is because I've got a couple of dogs that are kind of on the defense side and it's difficult for the clients to move them from defense fight flight into that pack drive where we want them to be. So guess which drive we use to do that? We actually do use prey drive to move a defensive dog from defense into pack. And the way that we do that is by using those objects of attraction. Not big on treats, you guys know this, but you want to use an object of attraction like a special toy that makes a noise that you only bring out for them when you're doing training. One of the dogs that just left camp that's still finishing up his peak performance, his name is Misha. He's a Karelian bear dog. He loves to chase squirrels when he's walking on the trail with his mom, and that can cause some trouble for her. So we actually use a squirrel for him so that she can gain his attention and continue on the trail. So an object of attraction with a dog that's in defense, who's leash reactive, let's say, and interested in other things that are going on, you're gonna use that object of attraction the very same way you would that I just described for Misha. You're gonna hold the toy close to where the dog can see it, give it a little squeak, get the dog's attention on you, and voila, your dog is in pack and ready to find out what you're asking of him to do. So those are the ways that I want you guys thinking about how to switch between the drives. If you've never taken the personality profile test, let me know. All you have to do is head on over to our website, alaskadogworks.com, get on that landing page and give us your email address and you can get that Understanding Drive Behaviors ebook. And you'll go through the book, you'll learn about the drives, you'll take the personality profile, and then what happens after you take the personality profile is kind of a cool thing. We've kind of talked about what types of dogs you have with your personality profile and we gave them a few nicknames like a couch potato. A couch potato will have low prey, low pack, and low defense. They're very difficult to motivate and probably does not need any training. You will definitely need extra patience if training is attempted since there are few behaviors with to work with. On the plus side, this dog is unlikely to get in trouble, will not disturb anyone, and will make a good family pet. Think of that bloodhound on that old show, Hee Haw, that liked to hang out on the porch. That's a couch potato type dog. All right, you guys, here's a different one, the hunter. High prey, low pack, low defense. 
This dog will give the appearance of having an extremely short attention span, but is perfectly able to concentrate on what he finds interesting. Training will require the channeling of his energy to get what you want. Patience will be required because the dog will have to be taught through prey drive. All right, here's one of my favorite descriptions of a dog personality, you guys. The gas station dog. High prey, low pack, high defense. This by far is probably the number one personality that we get here at Alaska Dog Works. So if you have a gas station dog, listen up. This dog is independent and not easy to live with as a pet and companion. Highly excitable by movement and may attack anything that comes within range. Does not care much about people or other dogs and will do well as a guard dog. Pack exercises such as healing need to be built up through prey, a real challenge. The gas station dog, I should tell you, does require a professional dog trainer to assist you. They are enjoyable and they are trainable, but they are challenging. The runner, high prey, low pack, high defense flight. Easily startled and or frightened, needs quiet and reassuring handling, not a good choice for children. These dogs need constant reassurance, you guys, and children that move quickly and abruptly can make these dogs actually attack them because they are unsure of themselves. These dogs have low confidence and they do require uh, professional dog training intervention. The shadow, low prey, high pack, low defense. This dog will follow you around all day. It is doubtful that he will get into trouble, likes to be with you, and is not interested in chasing much of anything. These are the dogs that most dog trainers use as demonstration dogs. Dogs that shadow them, dogs that mimic and mirror everything they're doing. If you guys remember a few weeks back, I talked about different types of dog training and mirroring is one of the hardest, but if you've got a shadow, it's easy to have that dog mirror the behaviors that you're asking it to do. Okay, so how many of you think you've got the teacher's pet? The pack and defense are, prey pack and defense fight are all pretty even in the scoring. So they're all about 50s on the scoring levels. These dogs are easy to train, even though I said defense fight. They are easy to motivate. Mistakes on your part are not critical. So you can kind of make a lot of mistakes with a dog like this and they're still going to kind of get what you're asking of them. So a teacher's pet is an easy trained, easy to train dog. So let's think about this. If you have a teacher's pet, you probably have a Labrador retriever, a golden retriever, or something of that along those lines. If you have a shadow, most definitely one of those types of dogs, and could be a German Shepherd. German Shepherds have a tendency to be more of a gas station dog though. Um, let's see, a runner, definitely going to call out my GSP owners, my German Short Haired Pointer owners. Those guys are definitely runners. Hunters, so my Siberian Huskies, I would definitely put as the hunter of this quote unquote personality profile nicknames, couch potatoes. In all the years I've been doing dog training, I would have to tell you guys that the couch potatoes are always basset hounds, okay? So if you guys have those types of dogs, you can use these little profile nicknames to help you figure out how to tackle your training needs to meet your training goals. That is why we developed this personality profile um, test using a very old school trainer named Volhard. He developed this personality profile in the early 1930s and 40s, I believe. So that you guys understand, it's been around for a long time. So again, if you're interested in taking the personality profile uh, test and you would like to read the Understanding Drive Behaviors ebook that we wrote, then you need to go on over to alaskadogworks.com 
and go on that landing page hit that subscribe button you'll start getting those emails they are pretty informational and again it's another way to expand your experiential learning opportunities for training with your dog all right you guys on july 11th we will be doing our group class at wonderland park at 11 30 a.m that is a saturday but on july 10th a friday at one o'clock we are going to meet with you on the coastal trail we will post information as we get closer to that friday the exact location of the coastal trail where we will meet you for a pack walk the pack walk is not i repeat is not a dog training opportunity the pack walk is simply a way to get out with a group of people like-minded individuals that would like to take their dogs on a 30 minute walk and you will earn an opportunity to check off a participation for our canine fit club what else is there robert that's about it adolf asked what do you think about clickers so I think clickers are on the positive reinforcement end of the spectrum and e-collars are on the negative reinforcement end of the spectrum. And they pretty much work the exact same way. If your timing is off, then you're not going to get the result that you want. So when you clicker train and give a treat, your dog, you'll say sit, you'll click, the dog will sit, you'll give the treat. If the dog comes up from that sit, while you're clicking and you give the treat then you've made a mistake so keep in mind clicker training can be very difficult lastly did you talk about our commercial i did not how many of you watch abc or fox. cw or fox so we did a commercial with coastal television here in anchorage and i hope that you guys get an opportunity to take a look at that it was a lot of fun to do we um, got to hang out with a couple of dogs that we just met and we got to hang out with a dog that we've had in training that I actually picked out for a very good friend of ours. So give that commercial a look and let me know what you thought of it. All right, you guys, take care. We'll see you soon. Thanks again.